Welcome back to Virtue Signaling Fitness, where I feed your ego, and you feed mine. And our community has a new tyrant, and he goes by the name of Sam Sulik. He's only 20 or 21 years old, and he's all on the sauce, like a giant jar of ragu, and it just makes me sick. You see that right there? He's putting on testosterone gel onto his lips. He's doing a second dose too, bro. But you know what? At least I'm gonna live until I'm 40. Look at this guy just driving around in his car. Just being on PEDs, hurting the moral fabric of our society, taking away and diminishing the hard work of us naturals. Whew. Man, I could only keep up that act for a very short amount of time. I don't know how some of you make that your entire personality, but we're gonna actually talk about Sam Sulik seriously in this video. Now, I'm not sure about this. I would assume he's in the process of getting ready to prepare for a show. It would be kind of odd if you got to the size he did and then you don't compete, or at least not try to compete. In a real basic sense, I'm just trying to warm up everything that I'm about to use. All right, so he's starting off with some really light cable stuff, basically pre-activation if you want to call it that. What I do myself, guys, prior to lifting is I like to do a quick dynamic stretching routine, especially for the shoulders, the low back, the hamstrings, the hips, the stuff that is really tight, especially if you are sitting all day or if you just drove for a while to the gym. And then a lot of the times I'll get a pair of five pound plates really light and I'll just do like some reverse flies. Maybe even hammer curls just to warm up my arms a little bit, like overhead tricep extensions. You could also do like chest flies or something like that. You could do like body weight lunges back and forth for a bit. There's a lot of stuff you can do to really warm up your body. The point is though, guys, when it comes to warm ups, do not exhaust yourself. Far too many people come in the gym and they do 20 minutes of intense cardio on the treadmill or running on the track. And they're already sweating like crazy going into their first working set of the day. Not a good idea. Or if you totally take your warm-up sets too far. I talked about this in the past, man. So many guys, if they're going to be on the bench press right, and they're going to do 185 this week for the 33rd week in a row, but they'll do 135, 145, 155, 165, 175, right? They basically go up in these tiny increments and they've already done numerous sets and then they're going to be at their so-called working weight. If you're going to go with 185, you could do the empty bar, 135. You could even do 165 or you could even simply just jump into 185 from that point. But warm-ups are meant to prime your body, not fatigue it. Far too many people get that wrong. All right, so let's see how he works up to his top set. If I'm not mistaken, this guy is extremely strong on a lot of things. All right, so he does 135. I noticed with his incline bench, he doesn't fully lock out. He basically does, I guess you could call it an old school bodybuilder technique. He does like, what, 80% lockout? He gets most of the way up, but he doesn't fully extend or stop or anything. I don't think there's a real benefit to doing so. Is it going to hurt your progress? I don't think so. But the real purpose of locking out guys ultimately is going to be safety. So if you are always short stroking the range of motion and then you finally go for another one and you miss, you still have to get your arms all the way locked out at the end to put the weight back. So if you always do that and then the final rep, you miss it and you get right where you normally do, but you can't get it up to put it back in the rack. The incline bench he's using has numerous J hooks. It looks like three on each side from higher to lower. That definitely makes things easier, but some incline benches and other benches just don't have that. Now he's on that looks like 365 pounds. He's got a moderate grip too, no wrist wraps, no elbow sleeves or anything. He is raw dogging this weight. He doesn't go all the way down to his chest, but that's close enough for me. I'm not really going to complain about that. Yeah, he's repping this out relatively easily too, man. This is a strong dude. Get up. Come on. Come on. Spotter's not touching the weight over and over. That's good. There we go. Okay, well, hey, give the uh, lucky... Mother, whatever that cutoff tank top with his nips hanging out says. This is a solid spotter. He did not touch the weight the whole time or get too touchy with it. He only really touched it once he started to noticeably fail the rep. So good job on that spotter. And he's doing 315. I guess this is his back offset. He's probably going to get this for 10 to 12 easy, I would guess. All right, he's going to go for one more. This is going to be... I think he's going to miss this. Oh, he got it. All right. This one he's going to miss. There's no doubt. There's no way he gets this. Yeah, that was... I was surprised he got the one before that, but that one, there was no way. 
And another spotter. My god, this guy just has the whole gym coming over. Very impressive regardless. Now, once again, man, you know, guys will say like, oh, well, if I was on all the PEDs he was on, I could also be repping out this on the incline. I'll tell you what, man. He is a great example of what dudes on the internet and in person, just people who are not really in the know of the game and the industry, guys actually think if you do one cycle or if you just kind of dabble in PEDs for a bit, you can look and be as strong as he is. That's not happening for 99% of you, bro. Now, he obviously has good bodybuilding genetics. It's funny, too, because guys say a lot of the time, they're like, well, how do you know a guy has good genetics if he's on PEDs, right? If, if we took the average gym bro and put them on PEDs, they could be just as big. That is not true, guys. You need good genetics to reach this size at all. I see these guys on Instagram all the time, dude. 18, 19, 20, some of these guys are 16, and they're gigantic. It's like, even with the gear, man, if you think the average person of this age is going to be able to put on this much muscle, you are, as the girls would say, Delulu. Okay, now he's back at the cable station. I think I've seen him do this once before. He basically does like a modified power fly and kind of converges his hands into each other. Uh, look at these people walking in front of his camera. Kick him out. Yeah, really a modified power fly, like I said. He keeps his elbows really bent the entire time, too. The question would be... Is this really an effective chest exercise compared to other stuff that he could be doing? I'm trying to envision doing this myself right now. I mean, I see why you could feel it in your chest. I would assume that if you were doing even something like a pec deck, which he might end up doing that in this workout, this range of motion's relatively limited. He's hunched over, like his chest isn't really expanding much, like a stretch to it. So I get the thought process behind this exercise, but... I'm having a hard time really being sold on it. Oh, speak of the devil, now he is on the pec deck. Looks like he's using the entire stack. A guy as strong as him, I mean, he's gonna have to get to the point where, unless he's able to add plates to the handle at the bottom, and even then it looks like there's limited space because it's closer to the ground, he would have to basically just do the full stack on something like this and just rep it out for as much as he can. All right, now it looks like he's back at the cable station once again. I don't know what gym you guys go to, but finding a double cable system like this could be relatively rare. A lot of gyms don't have anything like this. I mean, the best you're going to do is find ones that are kind of farther apart on like a pull-up station kind of setup. You know what I mean? Those kind of combo things a lot of gyms have. But even so, man, if you go to a busy gym, this place looks relatively calm. But how many of you would kill to have open cable stations like this readily available? A man can dream, right? All right, so he went from high, now he's going down to low. So maybe he's doing that old technique where it's like, all right, we're going to hit all the angles of the chest, bro. All right, now it is time for the infamous pump check. <laughs> See, now this right here is funny because this guy is like just enormous posing and flexing in the room. And then like some old Karen walks in with her yoga mat and two pound dumbbells and she's like, ah, this gym's got a lot of freaking cable stations, doesn't it? Wait a minute, a bench over at the cable station. Is he about to perform the iliac fiber pull down? Oh, so this is interesting. He's laying on the bench. This looks like a face pull. I don't think I've ever really seen them done this way, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Now, one thing I noticed with his training, he doesn't really milk out the negatives much. He kind of just goes up and down in the same cadence. I think I saw a video where Dr. Mike reacted to his training. I'm sure he had an aneurysm because Dr. Mike and those guys love to really milk out the negatives. And there are benefits to doing so, guys, with a controlled negative. But it's really overblown, I think, in the modern science-based community. These guys make every negative into, like, real-time slow motion. I mean, it's good that you can control the weight that much, but you don't really have to do a negative beyond two full seconds. I don't think there's really any benefit to that. Now we're on the lateral raise machine here. Very classic. A lot of people do the lateral raise just like the machine is designed. You know, they kind of have their arms right at that 90-degree angle and they hold the handle. Whenever I do these myself, guys, I just pretend I'm doing a normal lateral raise, like I'm holding dumbbells, but I'm not, and I just lift my arms up and down at the sides. If you ask me, I've built my delts up to this point doing just classic kind of snow angel, hands out to the sides. I don't think the way a lot of people do these lateral raises adds any benefit. I don't think it's just smart to do that. I don't see a reason. All right, so now we're back in the posing room. Now he's got a black tank top on under his red shirt. Was that there the first time? Okay, so now let's move on to his full day of eating. This is on Fuad Abiyad's media channel, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. All right, so he's just going for the calories, I would assume, with this. 
as big as he is, he'll probably eat the entire damn box. All right, now here is a big point. Is this going to be whole milk? Or is it going to be this nonsense skim or 1% milk? Given that he bulks the way he does, I'm going to assume it's whole milk. I also see the red label that in America usually means whole. So it is whole milk. I will say, Sam, if you're able to tolerate milk without any digestive problems, go for the raw milk, dude. That is going to be, like, next level. Raw milk is probably roughly as anabolic as a tiny TRT dose. Join the dark side. Oh, he's weighing out the cereal on top of a scale. I will say, guys, people ask me about weighing food. They're like, bro, how much does this weigh? How much does this meal weigh? How many ounces of this do you use? And I'm always like, I don't weigh my food, man. I've never once used a food scale for anything. I use the eyeball method. I tend to eat the same things every day. So once I get a general estimate of the macros, I can just duplicate that. I really don't think you need to weigh food, guys. And for a lot of people too, especially if you've got ab anxiety, if you've got this big fear that you're always fat, this is the fast track to eating disorders in a lot of people. You see especially a lot of girls that get bulimia and anorexia in the fitness space because they're obsessively weighing stuff. I'd say it's less common in dudes. Even so though, man, I've talked to a lot of guys now who have similar problems. This is not just a gender-specific phenomenon at this point. Ah, Sam, you spilled the milk over the side. If you guys didn't see my recent video, The Best Foods for Hard Gainers, which really just means you don't have a huge appetite, cereal and milk are absolutely on the list. Just because mixing them really shoots up the amount of food that you're eating without really having to try. And most cereals, especially stuff like this that are sugary, very easy to put down. Just do the, the milliliters. Come on, grams. Are you sure it's 160? You measured wrong. <laughs> you used milliliters. <laughs> well, it's the same thing. Is it? A milliliter of water is a gram. Oh my god, this guy, see? Big brain Sam, science mogging Fuad. But I think he said that this is almost 170 G carbs in one serving, so that's numerous cups of cereal. <laughs> Alright, so pre-workout, it looks like they're doing some intra-carb shake. And post-workout, we're back in the whip. He's got another shake. Ah, and here we go at five guys. Alright, so this is what I heard a lot of people saying. So... We're going to see the order that he gets. Those of you that don't live in the United States, Five Guys is a general burger and fries joint. I guess you could say they're a little bit more higher end, which is relative, compared to McDonald's and Wendy's, things like that. Their prices, I believe, are higher, but they're very known for giving you massive portions of food. People get mad at me whenever I talk about diet because I am not anti-saturated fat. In fact, I encourage you to eat whole fat animal products if you're willing, because they're very nutrient dense. The so-called science on why saturated fat is bad is very outdated. A lot of it is just simply opinion. It's a lot of weak correlational stuff. I find this very funny about diet, man. You guys saw the new thing that came out, right, about the carcinogen in aspartame and other sweeteners, right? It's funny, the whole fitness industry links arms and unites against that. They're like, oh, well, there's not sufficient evidence to say that it's a carcinogen. I totally understand your point. But when it comes to saturated fat and red meat, you can make the same exact statements. You're like, hey, there's very weak correlational data. There's even a lot of studies that have came out in recent years, guys, that don't even find correlations between saturated fat intake and alleged risk for anything. Some of them find positive correlations between long-term health and saturated fat intake. But then all these guys are just like, well, nope, it's very clear the evidence we have shows without a shadow of a doubt that red meat consumption is bad and saturated fat clogs your arteries. You guys are hypocrites. Who is this guy? Looks like Walmart brand Bill Goldberg. Oh, Sam has been recognized by a young man at the Five Guys and mom's taking a picture. That's cute. Mom's going to be driving that kid home like, does he take steroids? And he'll be like, I don't think so, mom. He just does creatine. All right, it's hard to tell, but it looks like he's getting water so i will say man all the gear he's on the amount of sugar he's consuming uh fried food too probably cooked in a lot of seed oil you know that's a lot of inflammation too i mean you can tell by his face he's holding a bunch of water he's got acne and stuff which that's mostly the gear you would assume even so though man if you have all those factors and then you throw on top of that a bunch of high fructose corn syrup yeah that's probably something you want to avoid is this sulex like tiny brother from a different dimension he looks just like him wait he's not done oh my okay we're back at the crib it looks like there's a bunch of is that ramen on the counter back there there's milk back out again i was gonna say it seemed like the amount of food he was eating was not as much as i would have expected even given the amount of five guys okay but it looks like he's pulling out crispy cream donuts oh wow 
Yeah, you guys did not lie. This is getting pretty dirty. Now, everything we've seen him eat so far, there's at least been nutrient density to it. The whole milk is nutrient dense. The red meat at the five guys is nutrient dense. Everything else has really just been cheap carbs or protein powder. If you're talking donuts like this, I don't even have to look at the label to know. Canola, soybean, maybe a mixture of those or other things too. There's going to be a bunch of added sugar. In terms of why the average American is so fat, guys, people say like, oh, well, it's because we don't move around enough. Man, the average person even 50 years ago, right? Everybody still had cars back then. People are not remarkably less active today than they used to be decades ago. People have this idea like 50 even 40 years ago, everybody was just like frolicking around these fields and at the beach playing football and basketball every day of their lives. No, plenty of people today are very active, dude. Plenty of people have jobs where they stand up. It's really not a huge difference from what it used to be. Cars still rule, at least in the United States. What is really causing the obesity epidemic? And people are going to say, oh, it's only calories. It's not only calories, guys. Okay. It's what you're going to find in this box of donuts right here. It is... High sugar, especially high refined sugar. The average person does not have nearly enough muscle mass or energy expenditure on a regular basis to warrant the amount of carbs, especially cheap sugar like this, that they're eating. And then you mix this in with all of the seed oils that are in almost every single snack food used in tons of restaurants too. They're very inflammatory in the body. The average person's omega-6 to 3 ratio is completely out of whack. It is infinitely higher now than what it used to be a number of years ago. And I know the Keiko people don't want to hear this. It's only Keiko, bro. You can lose weight eating chocolate and gain weight eating broccoli. Okay, that sounds cool in theory and you sound like a big brain when typing it out. But realistically speaking, you only eat chocolate or donuts to lose weight. What is going to happen to you? You're going to lose muscle mass. You're also going to hold on to more fat than you need to. Your body composition is going to completely tank. You can gain weight eating broccoli only. Find me a single person on planet Earth who could gain weight reliably eating only broccoli. These scenarios are very stupid. Their blood sugar goes up, it goes back down, two hours later they're hungry. It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. They just keep eating throughout the day too because their body is like, oh crap, we're all out of food. Then they get hungry again. They don't satiate themselves with whole foods. The entire thing's a disaster, guys. But if you think the epidemic of obesity and health problems is simply just because of calories in, calories out, you have a very, very limited scope on this topic. Here's what I find really funny about this whole thing. This guy is just pigging out on cereal and donuts, but he's still taking the time to weigh out and measure the milk. It's like, really, dude? All right, and that's it for the full day of eating. So uh, to recap, we had Cinnamon Toast Crunch with whole milk, we had some pre and post workout shakes with some intra carbs in them. We had five guys burgers and fries. And we had milk and Krispy Kreme donuts. Not exactly chicken, rice, and broccoli, but I guess it's working for what it needs to work for at the current point. I'm interested to see how he eats whenever he finally cuts down to, if he really changes up his diet. He's gonna pay the price for this eventually. He knows the risks that he's getting into. I love when people comment on these type of videos. They're like, oh, doesn't he know that this is unhealthy and he's going to die soon? I'm sure he does, bro. It's like any other person that goes seriously into bodybuilding, powerlifting, even serious sportsmen where there's high injury risk in them. People want to accomplish what they want to accomplish. They know the risks. They're willing to take them to get the rewards. But this has been it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Shout out, as always, to the Patreon supporters and the channel members. Get in contact with me down below for questions about your own training and eating. We'll get you on the right track. Be sure to grab your program. Stop wasting time in the gym and start making real gains. And save money on some great products and services. And I will catch you guys next time.